Hey everyone, my name is Will Valida. I'm a software engineer and Microsoft Data Platform MVP. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create an Azure Cosmos DB account using Terraform. Now, Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code tool that we can use for provisioning and managing our cloud infrastructure. Using Terraform, we can code our infrastructure in configuration files that describe our cloud resources. We can then use the Terraform CLI to deploy our resources to Azure. Terraform helps us to automate our infrastructure. By automating our infrastructure, we can lower the potential for human error when deploying and managing our infrastructure. We can also deploy the same template multiple times to multiple environments and reduce the cost of developing and deploying these environments by creating them on demand. Terraform can also help us to understand what infrastructure changes will occur before they are applied. The Terraform CLI can help us validate and preview our changes before we apply them, providing us as developers with an insight as to what will be applied before they're actually deployed and catch any unintended changes early. With Terraform, we can also deploy our infrastructure to multiple clouds. This provides us with a consistent set of tooling for managing infrastructure across multiple clouds should we have to deploy resources across different cloud providers. Now using Terraform, we create our configuration using HashiCorp language syntax, which allows us to specify our cloud provider, in this case for this tutorial, Azure, and the elements that make up our resources, in this case, Azure Cosmos DB. In the upcoming demo, we're going to configure our backend to deploy our Cosmos DB account to Azure. We will then write our Terraform file that will create our Cosmos DB account. And then we will use the Terraform CLI to create our execution plan, verify the changes that we will make, and then deploy our Cosmos DB account to Azure. So here I am in Visual Studio Code. In here, I have an empty directory, which we will create our Terraform files. Now to create a Terraform file, all we need to do, is just click on the new file uh, icon here, and just go main.tf. And this is where we will write our Terraform code. Now Terraform projects can have multiple Terraform files, including files that hold variables, files that produce output ver um, uh, variables if we're working with modules, etc., etc. But for this tutorial, we're gonna keep it nice and simple and just work off one file. Now, before writing our code, we need to log into Azure before we can start to deploy our infrastructure. So if I go into my terminal here, we can do this easily using the AZ CLI, just going AZ login. And this will open up a web browser, which will help me, which will allow me to log into my Azure account. Once we are logged in, we will, we should be ready to start writing our code. So I'm gonna hop back into Visual Studio Code. Now let's configure our back end. What I'm gonna do is just dump in some Terraform code, like so, and explain what each component is bit by bit. So right at the top here, we have a Terraform block. Now what this does, this contains our Terraform settings, included the required provided, um, providers that Terraform will use to provision our infrastructure. For each provider, we have a source attribute here that defines an optional host name, a namespace, and a provider type. Terraform installs providers from the Terraform registry by default. So in this example, what I've got here is I've got the Azure RM provider source as being divided from HashiCorp forward slash Azure RM. We can also define a version constraint for each provider. This version um, attribute is optional, but um, it's recommended to use uh, to enforce a specific provider version. Because without it, Terraform will use the latest version of the provider, which may introduce breaking changes into your code. Now the block down here is the provider block. And this configures the sp specified provider, in our case, Azure RM. A provider is a plugin that Terraform uses to create and manage our resources. And we can define multiple provider blocks in a Terraform configuration to manage resources from different providers. 
And then finally, we have a resource block. And resource blocks are used to define components for our infrastructure. It might be a physical component such as a server, or it can be used to uh, represent a logical resource such as an Azure resource group here. Now resource blocks have two strings before the block. So in this example, we have the resource type, which is an Azure RM resource group, and then the name, which is just RG. So you see here how the prefix Azure RM that maps to our provider. And then this is the type of resource that we're going to create, which is a resource group. Now, different resources will have different attributes, but for a resource group, we can uh, give that resource group a name. So I've given that a Cosmos DB Learn RG and a location, Australia East. I'm in Auckland and uh, Australia East, which is in Sydney, is the nearest uh, Azure da data center uh, uh, to me. We haven't got our New Zealand data centers quite yet. That's coming early next year, 2022. So now we have everything uh, that we need to start creating our Cosmos DB account. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, what I'm going to need is a resource block. So I'll just use a resource block um, syntax like so. So I use Azure RM and then I'm looking for Cosmos DB account. So that will be the resource that I'm going to create. And then for the name, I'm just going to give it um, DB. So I'll give my Cosmos DB account a name. So just going to call it the leader to tutorial real Cosmos DB. I'm going to give it a location. And I want to store it in the same location. Oh, not live cycle. As I do, as I've, um, I want to store it in the same location as my resource account. A resource group. So what I can do for that, so I can go Azure RM resource group dot RG dot location. So here is the name of the resource that I've um, provided earlier, or the resource type, then the name of that resource. So I'm saying, okay, for this resource group, I want this specific resource group to use. And I want to use the location of that resource group as my location for this Cosmos DB account. And we could also do the same for resource group name. So I've got my resource group name as the resource group name that I want to hold my Azure Cosmos DB account uh, or provision my Cosmos DB account to. Then we need to give it an offer type. This is um, just the offer type of the, the Cosmos DB account. Uh, this can only be standard at the moment, so this might change in the future, but currently it's just standard, so we'll leave it as that for now. And then kind, this can be either global document DB or MongoDB. So I'm just going to use global document uh, DB for now. Then I need to provide a consistency policy. So for those of you who know Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Cosmos DB comes with multiple um, levels of consistency. Just got a bit of a syntax error there. But for this account, all I'm going to do is just give it a consistency level of session. Now, if we're doing um, bounded staleness, we can configure the staleness of the Cosmos DB account. But since we're using session, we don't need to do that. And then find for Terraform, even though I'm not um, well, I'm not supplying multiple regions for failover. We do have to give it a geolocation. Let me scroll down a little bit here. And this basically defines where the data should be replicated to uh, with the failover priority. Um, so for that, I need to provide a location. And again, I'm going to use the same location as I have done for my resource group. And then I'm also going to give it a failover priority. I'm going to set that to zero since it's the only region I'm going to associate with my Cosmos DB account. So it'll be the only way, uh, only location I can fail over to. Um, if I had multiple locations, I would increase, um, I would just increment this failover priority attribute. So if I had, uh, say, two regions and I wanted this to be the second region, I could just increase that to one, but it works on zero base indexing. So I'll leave it at zero for now. Cool. So that should be everything I need to um, provision my Cosmos DB account. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to create a new terminal. I'm going to use my command line terminal. 
And the first thing we need to do is initialize our Terraform configuration. So to do that, see if I can just zoom in a little bit here. Let's go Terraform init. And this should initialize my Terraform backend. So it's prov initializing my provider plugins, just installing all the plugins I need to actually provision my resources using Terraform. Cool, so that's been successfully initialized. So now I wanna make sure that my Terraform um, configuration, um, I wanna make sure that the syntax is valid. So in order to do that, I can write Terraform uh, validate. That's just gonna make sure that all of my Terraform code makes sense syntactically. Sweet, so my configuration is valid. So now what I wanna do is create a execution plan. And I can do this using Terraform plan. Now what this does, it this command creates an execution plan, but it doesn't execute it. Instead, what it will do, it will determine what actions are necessary to create the configuration that we've specified in our Terraform code. Um, and this allows us to verify whether our execution plan matches our expectations before many, making any changes to um, actual resources that are provisioned in the cloud. And we can provide an optional um, out parameter to specify an output file uh, that, uh, for the plan um, if we want to do that. But what I'll do is I'll just run Terraform plan now, and this will generate our execution plan. Cool, and with the um, power of video editing, we can see that our um, Terraform plan has been created really, really quickly. So what we expect, what's gonna happen, what our Terraform plan is saying is that an Azure Cosmos DB account will be created uh, along with this resource group. So here is our uh, location and our name that we provided for our uh, resource group. And then for our Cosmos DB account, We've given it um, our location, the kind, the offer type that we said that we we're gonna give, um, our resource group that we want to provision our Cosmos DB account to, and also the name that we've given it in our Terraform file. And also our consistency policy, uh, so we've given it a consistency level of session. And also we've provided it a geolocation of Australia East but it isn't uh, zone redundant as, as, as expected. So now that we have our Terraform plan and well, our execution plan and we know what's going to be provisioned, what we can do is run Terraform apply to apply it. Now the output of this command will actually show us the execution plan and then prompt us for approval before proceeding. Uh, and this gives us a chance to see that if there's anything in the plan that seems uh, incorrect or, or even dangerous, we can actually abort the changes um, by typing anything else but yes. Cool, and with the power of video editing, we can see that our plan has been generated again, so we can verify it one more time. And then Terraform, the CLI will actually ask us, do you want to perform these actions? Um, and only yes will be accepted to approve. Um, so we can see that everything's okay, so I'm just gonna type in yes. And this will start to provision our Cosmos DB account to, um, to, Azure, to our Azure subscription. So there it is, it's starting to provision. And we're just gonna leave that cooking for a little while and come back when it's ready. And as we can see, our Cosmos DB account has been created. So if I go into the Azure portal, I can see that my Cosmos DB account has been created. And there it is, so there's my resource group, my read and write locations that are specified. And if I go into my default consistency, I can see there's the session consistency that I have configured this account um, with the consistency le level that I've configured this account to be at. So to recap, in this video, we learned what Terraform is and how we can use it to automate the provisioning of our cloud infrastructure. We learned some basic Terraform CLI commands that we can use to validate our Terraform code, create our execution plans, and then apply it. 
and where we learn all of this in the context of provisioning an Azure Cosmos DB account. In upcoming videos, we'll use Terraform to provision more Azure Cosmos DB related re resources, as well as use Terraform to connect our Azure Cosmos DB account to other resources in Azure, such as Log Analytics and Azure Key Vault. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Give this video a like if you like it, and I'll see you all next time.